Hello, everybody, and welcome to our video on this 2017 Silverado with a customer complaint of a misfire. The customer's complaint, this vehicle came to us from another garage. The customer's complaint is for the first three or four minutes of driving uh, first thing in the morning, it runs rough. And then as it starts to warm up, it, it clears itself up and it's fine for the rest of the day. When, when it's shut off and allowed to sit overnight, then it starts to misfire again next thing in the morning. And we notice that it also has a check engine light on it. I haven't checked it for codes yet, but we'll get to that in a second. But basically what we're gonna do is walk you through how we uh, went about diagnosing this misfire complaint on this fairly new Silverado. So because the check engine light was on, the first thing we did was went in and took a look at the codes. It's got two codes in. It's got a P050D, which is a cold start, rough idle code, which kind of goes hand in hand with what the customer was uh, telling us. And it's got a P0300 random misfire code. So I think what we're going to do next is we're going to take the vehicle for uh, we're going to take the vehicle for a test drive, and we're going to take a look at the misfire data while we're driving it, just to see which cylinders. Uh, appear to have the most misfires and you can see here from our road test data that we looks like we're dealing with a misfire on cylinder one and cylinder number three and looking at the data here it looks like number three is the worst offender of the bunch so that's the cylinder we're going to kind of concentrate on at least in the beginning we decided to run two tests on this vehicle. We wanted to do an injector balance test and a volumetric efficiency test. We suspected either a problem with the injectors or a problem with um, carbon buildup on the valves or something of that nature. So we're going to start off here with our VE test and VE test is pretty simple. Using a VE calculator you um, basically take some numbers from a road test. So what we're going to do here is we're going to road test the vehicle. Uh, we're going to drive it around until we can go to a wide open throttle and then we're going to record the uh, intake air temperature, RPM, and mass airflow meter reading at 100% throttle and somewhere north of um, uh, 4,000 RPM. And you can see I just had a chance to do that. So now we're going to take this thing back to the shop and, and plunk those numbers into our volumetric efficiency calculator and see where we come up. So we're using this uh, VE calculator. Uh, if you Google OTC tools, this thing comes right up. Pretty simple. You take the uh, data from the road test uh, at wide open throttle. In this case, our intake air temperature at 77 degrees, our RPM at 5200, our mass airflow meter reading at 250 grams per second. We enter in the engine size at 5.3 liters, and we come up with a volumetric efficiency of 90%, which is um, pretty decent for a pushrod V8. So we do not really suspect at this point that we've got any um, carbon issues, at least nothing that's restricting breathing on this engine. So the next thing we're going to do is our injector balance test. We're going to go into module diagnostics. We're going to select the engine control module. We're going to go down to control functions. there we're going to select the fuel system and finally the injector balance test. To run the actual injector test is pretty simple. Um, once you're in the injector test menu you simply go through and uh, select injector 1 through 8. When you do that the computer is going to shut the injector off momentarily, measure a pressure drop in the rail, and those pressure drops are displayed uh, in the data stream and then once you've collected that data we can go back and analyze it and just looking at this uh, we can see that injector number three has a fairly significant change in pressure compared to the other two that we've collected so far um, actually as we look at this and we go down there's quite a bit of variance between all the injectors so now that we've got our uh, injector readings, it's time to analyze them. And the way General Motors does this is a little bit different than, uh, let's say, what Ford would do. Uh, being said that, uh, I'll, I'll walk you through how you analyze these results, and then we'll see if we can't draw some conclusions from that. So this is the procedure taken right out of the service manual on how to do the calculation on uh, whether the injectors are okay or not. So basically what you do is you 
discard the reading from the suspect injector, in this case injector number three. You add all the rest of them together, divide by seven, uh, eight injectors less the um, one we're discarding, and then once you have that number you multiply by 0.2 to give you a 20% maximum allowable variation between injectors. So we're going to go ahead and do the math on this one. So I have my seven injector pressure drops, add them together I get 249.8. Divide by seven to get an average pressure drop per injector gives me 35.6 and then I multiply that by 0.2 to get my maximum allowable pressure drop between injectors. That gives me 7.1 PSI as the maximum allowable pressure drop between injectors. And now we just take that back to our data and see how the injectors on this vehicle measure up. So now when we go back and re-examine the data, knowing that we're only allowed a 7.1 PSI pressure drop from injector to injector, uh, it's easy to see looking at number three that there's way more than a seven PSI variance. Also looking at some of the other ones, we also see that there's more than a seven PSI variance. So I think this one uh, is pretty straightforward. We're going to call it for a set of injectors. So we went ahead and had our customer uh, order up and put a set of injectors in this thing. Interestingly enough, they were on back order and we had to wait a couple of weeks for him to get the injectors in. but. A new set of injectors were installed into this vehicle. It was road tested. The misfire was gone. The vehicle worked normally. Uh, the codes didn't come back. So bottom line here, this thing had a set of bad injectors. And if you're wondering about the vehicle, it had about 110,000 kilometers on it, which is roughly 80,000 miles. So it wasn't even a high miler. Until next time. If you like this video, please let us know by following us or liking us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And if you want access to more in-depth uh, training videos, please visit our website at www.autoaid.ca. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video.